Going Nowhere, Episode 13, Water Tower. The first thing to go was her name. I wouldn't know what it was if I didn't keep playing these recordings to remind myself that she did exist at some point. The episodes themselves don't have her anywhere, but these outtakes do. I'm out of them now. There's a limited number of them. And I've been listening to them over and over and over again since she... Well, who's to say? This podcast is going to cease production soon. I haven't been producing any work, I mean. And the station's given me enough warnings as it is. So I guess... No more episodes. This is just... A reflection. Of sorts. In memoriam. But I can't stop recording. I can't not talk about what happened even if I don't really know what that is. Even if I know no one is listening. As much as I would love to stake my claim and honor in a valiant, heroic motion, to sit in front of this stupid, crappy old microphone and stroke my own ego by saying that I'm doing it for her. I'm not. I'm doing it for myself. Maybe someday I'll be able to put into words what I was feeling when all this happened what my thought was behind my actions, you know, if there was any thought of my own motivating them. Until then, I've got one more tape to listen to, from when I was first given a green light to start brainstorming and recording episode ideas for the launch of the podcast. When I was out scouting with her. I think it's over there some more. I don't think we're actually driving towards it. Over where, Meg? I don't know where you're pointing. Turn left! Meg, if I turn left, I will be driving through grass and, uh, you know, private property? We should- hey, can you just get your head back inside the car? Okay. We're always slightly too much to the right of it. Like, distorted perception when you're chasing a rainbow, right? So if we keep driving left, I feel like we have to- STOP! What? What's wrong? There. We got it framed perfectly between the trees. Jesus Christ, kid! You almost gave me a heart attack. If we can't find it, then I'd at least like to get a few pictures of it. Can you unpack the camera while I grab the microphone? Why do you need the microphone? I'm recording. It's good to have some outtakes from the field, just in case. Alright. You know, I don't think many podcasts have field recordings. The Nowhere Water Tower, famed for its elusiveness. As an emergency source of water, it's the exact opposite of accessible. After a local government official went missing while attempting to visit the tower for a routine inspection, 
the town was alerted to just how weird nowhere can get. I met this other student, um, Ellie, in my social psychology class, and they said it might just be the government covering up an accident or something. They started working as an intern at the museum and had to join the Nowhere Historical Society, which I guess is a big deal if you do, like, museum stuff in Nowhere. They had to do this whole research project, and they told me that stuff like that would happen all the time before there were stricter workplace and construction regulations. You would think the families or someone would notice their loved ones gone, but they didn't. There was such a clean cover-up job on their deaths. If... If I had figured it out sooner. Or maybe if I had just not been so self-involved in the first place. If I hadn't gotten so mad. I knew Ellie shouldn't have excused that argument. God, why am I so obsessed with myself in this situation when she's the one that... It's getting harder and harder to remember her face. From that moment backwards in memory, everything dissolves like a piece of paper left in water. The ink of information bleeds, runs together before being erased entirely. Can you hurry up? I'll get there when I get there. I'm just making sure we can find the car again before we just walk into the woods and never come back. <sighs> this area is blocked off. Police tape? Park service tape? Or just the thin orange tape? Uh, I guess thin orange? It's more like a pink, in my opinion. That's probably town hall. Just, can we go around it? This is the most direct trail to the water tower. If we go around it, we might lose it again. This is the third dead end you've taken us to. Well, if these trails weren't so haphazard, maybe I'd have an easier time. Meg. Yeah, I know. Oh. <gasps> yeah, jeez. Strong winds today. I hope we don't have to deal with any falling debris. No! Can't you tell? It shifted to the left again. What if it's, like, a weird satellite or something disguised as a water tower and orbiting around Earth? Okay, astronaut. You go call NASA about that, and I'll focus on getting us out of here. What? I'm gonna use some forestry magic? I've got a compass, Meg, on my phone. Remember? Science first. Right. Sure, but... When what you're dealing with can't really be explained by science, what do you do? Things ever feel so bad sometimes that it just doesn't feel like anything's wrong at all. Like. You get used to seeing everything around you go gray and cold that your body becomes accustomed to it. You're just so tired all the time. And you don't even notice that it might be a problem. When I went to her house, that tired feeling started. It wasn't her home at all. Everything that made her life a unique story wiped away. Her truck wasn't even parked in the driveway. A family lived there that I had seen maybe once or twice around town. And I was just some kid standing on their sidewalk like a creep, wearing an old jacket that used to belong to someone that didn't exist. 
I stuck my hands in the pocket of that jacket, just to give him something to do besides be hands. And the world kept going gray as I felt something smooth and papery. Fished it out and stared at the artwork of the tower from her deck, half expecting to see her face in the painted disaster. None of the family was Wiccan. That doesn't directly involve her, so I can know it pretty easily. And I know there was a reason she started practicing, like, a really good spiritual reason. It's not about potions or rituals, she told me. It was about intention. Sure, the tiny rituals and holidays were fun to do. But she wanted me to know that you attract what your intentions are. She must have been really strong in order to stay here. To be remembered. But my memory isn't going to last. It's clinging to the ledge with its fingertips clamped tight, but it's sliding ever closer to the fall. Eventually, I will have to let go. I'm sorry I got us lost. It's okay, Meg. The woods are confusing sometimes. I think... If you don't know how to explain something with the tools you've been given, you should seek out other tools. Learn and try to figure it out. Eventually something will click. Everything has a thread it connects back to, Meg. You've just gotta follow it to the right person, or place, or... Weird, ever-shifting water tower? <laughs> sure. If that's what you want to chase right now, then go for it. You're a good kid, you know that? Going Nowhere is a weekly mystery podcast produced by the Nowhere radio station. In this episode, Charlie Lyle was played by Rose K. Morgan at Rose K. Morgan on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to catch the next episode. Rate and review us on iTunes or leave us a like. Your support genuinely helps. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Nowhere Radio. Visit our Twitter for a link to our Discord community. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.